Hi, Mavi here. Today's tutorial is a quick and easy do-it-yourself elopement or engagement announcement. You can use this for a save the date. And it's actually a really good template just to have because you can interchange any of the pictures and the text for whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you uh, two tutorials in one. We're gonna show you how to do this cute little heart pattern that we have in the background, as well as the card itself. So let's go ahead and get started. The first First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a pattern and you can make a ton of patterns for the background. You can use a chevron, you can do hearts, circles, dots, anything you want. Once you master this, you are going to have so much fun. So I'll show you how I did this heart. First thing you have to do is you actually have to start with a brand new blank file and the size of this file is going to be 100 pixels, make sure you have pixels selected, otherwise it's going to be giant, because if not, it'll be inches or centimeters. We want it to be pixels. By 100, with a resolution of 72, and the background needs to be set to transparent. Sometimes the default will be white. We want to set this to transparent. And then click OK. So the next thing that I did, just because I like everything to be nice and centered, is I set some guides so that I can make sure that my heart is in the exact middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to view, select new guide, and I'm going to do a vertical guide at 50 pixels, and I'm gonna do another horizontal at 50 pixels. There we go, so now I kind of have a little site that's right in the middle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pick my custom shape tool. Sometimes what you'll have here is a rectangular tool as default, but if you click on the little corner, you can choose a variety of different shapes. So I'm gonna go up to my custom shape tool and you have a ton of shapes that came with your Photoshop. If you're seeing a limited selection, choose all elements shapes. And as you can see, you can make a pattern out of anything. You can do a bicycle pattern, a car, you can do stars, absolutely anything. So for this one, we're gonna use a heart. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw my heart. You can make it fat, or you can make it skinny, however you want. And I'm gonna draw it right there. I wanna make sure that the opacity is at 100%. And I'm also gonna make sure that the color I have is black. So it's a very simple pattern. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my move tool and I'm going to make sure that this is right in the middle. So I'm using my up and down arrows and my side to side arrows to put that in the center. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a duplicate layer here. The very fastest way to do that is use a short key and that is Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And now you have the same shape twice. So. In order to make this pattern, we're gonna go over to filter, down to other, and then we're gonna choose offset. If it asks you if you wanna simplify the shape, say yes or okay. And you're going to set the offset at horizontal plus 50 pixels right and vertical plus 50 pixels down. And as you see, I have the preview on and it shows the little pieces. And then I'm gonna choose wrap around and click okay. So. I do have my pattern ready to go. What you wanna do is you're gonna come up to file and you're gonna say define pattern. If for some reason this isn't there, here's a little trick that I found. Create a new background layer by choosing this little icon. Bring it down to the bottom and make sure that that layer is selected. Sometimes you'll find that this is gray and you can't choose it. Try that trick, I learned that just through experience. So you're gonna define the pattern and then you can call this whatever you want, hearts, sometimes it's numbered, and then you're gonna click OK. So now that I have my pattern, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this card. So for this card, I used a couple of fonts. The Mr. and Mrs. is Chopin Script, and then We Got Married is Cooper Plate Gothic Light. As you can see, we have a lot of fonts we can choose from. So you can change those to whatever you want. I just wanted to let you know what I was using here. So the very first thing I'm going to do when I'm making this card is make a new blank file and I'm gonna select a photo file and I'm going to do this particular one as a landscape orientation. Now, the reason why I'm choosing that is because the photo that I'm using 
of the couple is portrait. So if you're going to use a landscape photo, then use the template for a portrait file. And I'm using a five by seven. Make sure that your resolution is at 300. That's a pretty high resolution. And then I set my background to transparent, but you can set it to whatever you want and click OK. Now the reason why I do this this way is because I had an aunt who was getting a lot of these wedding announcements coming from all of her nieces and nephews. So what she likes to do is she just likes to cut the picture of the couple out and put it on her fridge. She doesn't necessarily want to keep the entire announcement that has all the information. So she asked me when I make my next announcement if I can make sure that the picture of the couple is nice and big so that maybe it'll fit into a small frame and she can cut them straight out without putting anything on top. It's just the couple. And I thought that is a really great idea. So that was her idea and I really like it. Same thing goes for the pictures that I put of kids and babies and dogs and all that. I make sure that people can just cut it out and use the photo and not have to worry about having a very large five by seven announcement with all the writing on it. Those can accumulate fast. So anyways, we'll go ahead and get started. Now here's my blank file. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill this with the background color black. I'm gonna use my paint bucket to fill this black. And then I'm going to start adding new layers. So I'm going to add a new layer right here. And I'm going to use my pattern. So I'm going to stay on my paint bucket. This is how you use patterns. You can use your paint bucket and then you go up to the top and click on the little pattern checkbox. And then you're going to find the pattern that you made. Click on it. And then you just click on it. So here's your layer. Right now you can't see it because the color is black. But if I take the visibility of the black layer off, you can see that there is a color. Now I want to put a solid color on top of that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this little icon here. It looks like a circle that's cut in half and it's a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to use solid color and that solid color is going to be white. You can use whatever color you want. If you want it to match your theme for your wedding, you can do that. For the card that I just made, I did white. Click OK. And then now we have to actually tell this layer to conform to the shape. So there's two ways you can do that. You can bring your little cursor right in between and click Alt and you'll see these little double lines. You can click that one or you can go up to Layer, Create Clipping Mask and it'll do the same thing. Now I'm going to take this opacity down to about 25. I don't want it to be very bold. I want it to be very subtle. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my picture in. So I'm going to use my move tool. I'm going to come down to my project bin and I'm just going to drag that beautiful picture in. Now I want to make sure that this is at the very top so I'm going to move it to the top. If you can't see it for some reason or that happens it's just because it needs to be the top layer. So just move it up. Make sure you have your move tool and because this image is way too big for this card right now I'm going to use my transform tool. So either you can go ahead and click on the corner or you can do command or control T and you want to make sure you constrain the proportion so that we don't make them disproportionate and then just adjust the size however you like. You can blow them up a little bit. It's totally up to you. Once you have it where you want it, you want to go ahead and click commit or enter. And now we're ready to add some text. Now if you'll notice, I have a little bit of a layer here in between the text and my background. It's up to you. It's completely up to you whether you want that. So what I did was I'm going to use a rounded rectangle tool and I just drew that on top. It kind of makes a little bit of a mat and I took the opacity way, way down to about 15. Okay, now you're ready to add some text. So you're going to go on to your horizontal type tool. I would go ahead and make a new layer and then go ahead and start typing. So I'm going to choose the font that I wanted. I encourage you to experiment and change it and that's the wonderful thing about it. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So you're going to use your command or control plus so I can make sure that I like the way it looks. I can select this and change the size if I want. And you can also make it bold if you want. You can make it italics if you want. There's a whole lot of different choices. 
So that's their name and then I'm going to put we got married. I'm going to use a different font and I'm probably going to use a different size also. And then finally I'm going to put the date. Now if that's too big I'm just going to double click on that layer and just bring the font size down. Now you can also use vertical type tool if you like. So you can see. So you can change your mind. You can say oh you know what I don't really like that or oh I want to put that there but I want it black. Whatever you want to do and if you don't like something you can take the visibility off. So there you have it. I mean it's really simple. I made that in less than 15 minutes. So the last thing you have to do is save this as a JPEG or as a PNG file whichever you like. If you just use save it's going to be a Photoshop file. It won't be easy for you to print that so you want to go ahead and save as and when you save as you want to either use PNG or JPEG and then click save and you're all set. If you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments below and this is something that I would definitely save with your layers so that you can change the background color. I'll show you that really quickly. You can take whatever color you like. If you want it to be blue or gray or whatever your theme is, just use your bucket. Make sure your pattern is unchecked and make sure you're on your background layer and you can change it just like that. Same thing goes for any of your font. If you wanted to change the font, you could. You can also get rid of any of the layers if you'd like. So that's just a really simple easy thing for you to do. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you'll come back for more videos. If you have any requests let me know and I can try and get those to you. I've been a little bit slow in making these videos but I'm doing better. Have a great day and happy photoshopping.